We want ringside seats before they get here. They're not coming. Not at the same time. <laughs> it's impossible. They would never do that. And we would never let it happen. Oh, come on. Mike, give us a break. <laughs> Look, I told you. There's only one reservation. We checked. They're on their way. Yeah. <laughs> each other. I want you to save me a table. Staying by the phone. You keep me posted. Ida! This is the end of a nightmare! Luella, you look gorgeous. What a beautiful suit. Save my table. As always, table number one. Table number one for Miss Parsons. <laughs> Bet your buttons it is. Hedda. Oh. <coughs> Honey. Luella. It's been a long time. It certainly has. Maybe not long enough. I thought you might stand me up. It occurred to me that you might not be here. Listen, sweetie, the only reason I invited you here was because of Harriet. She asked me to thank you for the review. Figured with a mother like hers, she needs all the help she can get. At least my child and I are still friends. Would you care for a chair, Miss Hubbard? To sit on or clobber her with? <laughs> We're only joking. <laughs> of course we are. We're always joking. <laughs> I didn't come here to fight. Kind of cuts down on the possibilities, doesn't it? This was a sincere invitation. Old dog learns new tricks. All right. If you can't take this seriously, I'm leaving. <laughs> what, and disappoint our audience? What they expect. You know exactly what they expect. And they're liable to get it. Uh, would Madame care for a drink? Yep, we'll need it. Martini, make it a double. Make it a pitcher. Look at them, all waiting for us to stone each other to death with all our pits. They're all scared witless. If you and I ever compared notes, we'd rock this town by the heel. And we all know this town has no shortage of heels. This is a wonderful industry, run by wonderful people. Luella, don't kid yourself. It's a jungle. 
Some of us have managed to survive and crawled our way up to the top. Listen, dearie, I was at the top when you were a has-been practicing to be a never-was. Don't you remember how it all started? Oh, I remember all too well. <laughs> Parsons is coming to town. I'm trying to get back in the studio. Remember my old friend Luella? No. The one I sent my Hollywood stories to. You mean that gossip junk? <laughs> it's not junk. Luella writes movie reviews and columns. She's becoming very, very important. You're an actress, Mom, not a tattletale. Oh, Bill. I've been kicking around this town so long, they're getting tired of my face. I'm getting tired of it, too. But with Luella coming to town, who knows? You go to work for her? Maybe, if she asks. I'll get the taxi driver to see you off. You understand, don't you, chum? Well, what do you think? Joke. The truth is, the only thing I'm wearing that belongs to me is my underwear. It doesn't show. Look what Louie did, and all for me. You remember Baby Parson? Of course, she looks just like you. No, she doesn't. I'd like you to meet my new fiancé. Dr. Harry Martin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pleasure. Where did you meet? Uh, on a train. And this is Hedda Hopper, the Mad Hatter. She's a wonderful actress and knows everybody in Hollywood. So does Doggy. He's a urologist. Ah. Mama, it's a real show. 
Ted has been so generous sending me all the gossip from the West Coast for my column. But now that Mr. Hurst has sent me out here... Yes? I'll be sure, first-hand, nothing goes unnoticed. That's quite a job. You'll need help. Darn tootin' I will. I'll hire a staff. I'll be glad to help on a regular basis. Honey, you're an actress. You have your career. Mommy, it looks like you're on. From now on, when a fella says Bella Bella, you can bet he's referring to our Luella. That's why we consider it such a bargain to have acquired the services of Luella Parson. <laughs> Crestview, 14 double two, Dot speaking. Crestview, 14 double two, June speaking. One moment for Miss P. It's our friendly plastic surgeon, Mary Pickford's had a facelift. I want to see her, stitches or no stitches. Mama, want something to eat? Uh, put it over there, I'm on a diet. Answer the phone. Tuesday at 11. she has a luncheon at 12.30. It won't bite you. Oh, Miss P, travel agent said he sold them two tickets to Hawaii. Mama, it's Mr. Cohn. Crestview, 14 double two. All right. I've got to have a lead. Something hot off the skillet, Harry. Not yesterday's leftovers. I'll give you ten minutes. I'm afraid she's unavailable, Mr. Stern. I'll tell you call. Miss P. Check this out. Jack Hamilton. I'm sorry, but I'll make What do you want, Jack? She may have great legs, but so does my baby grand. Crestview 1422. Oh, good morning, Miss Gaynor. Gary walked out. Crestview 1422. I want a 48-hour exclusive or no blurb on your piano. Miss P. Gary Cooper. Get me Harry Cooper. Okay. Hello, Gary. You're a bit late, Gary. I already know. Come over for a chat, dear. If you're well enough to walk out, you're well enough to get your keister over here. And don't stop to talk to anybody on the way. You know how this town gossips. Do you have your stars? Paul Mooney and George Raff. I'm sorry, Miss Gaynor. I'll make certain she gets your message as soon as possible. What do you mean, I owe you? Harry, your latest picture got a great review, so don't you dare tell me who owes who what. Ducky. Is he? Oh, I'm not too busy for you, Ducky Walkie. You were right about Jeanette being pregnant. Oh, you're so good to me. Ducky, you're not. What? Come on, tell Ducky I'm not what? Toying with me. <sighs> Ever since I first laid eyes on you, I knew that's who I wanted. Lolly, you're the most glamorous woman in the world. And if you don't take me seriously, it's going to break my heart. Good morning, Mr. Hawks. Uh, she's on another line. Can I take a message? My garden of Persian cats. Be good. Miss P. What do you got? The florist on Beverly called. John Gilbert just sent five dozen red roses to Greta Garbo. The Hopper Real Estate. Yes, I'm the agent on the property. Just went on the market this morning. I've been besieged. Well, let me check my busy schedule, see if I can squeeze you in. Lucky you. I've been opening this afternoon late. See you there. Five o'clock. Bye. Thanks, man. There is a back entrance. Break my back? Hey, Lady Angel, pictures. 
Oh, someone remembers. Hedda Hopper. I remember you in Virtuous Wives. What are you, professor of ancient history? How about that great scene where you kicked that kid's toys? You were the worst cat on screen. Gee, thanks. Would you mind taking that in the kitchen? You're puddling. What's a big-time actress like you doing in a dump like this? I'm studying for a new role in Les Miserables. Yeah? Yeah. Come on. Reno, Sinner in Silk, The Snob, they were great pictures. You're a high-class dame. Thank you. Adam and Evil, Venus of Venice. Oh, please. <laughs> How come you don't have a guy to take care of you? I can take care of myself. Sure. So, uh, what are you up to now? Oh, I'm in a new movie. Big part? Don't worry, your type will come back. But this place... I like the view. I've seen the wretches. He couldn't direct traffic, let alone the movie. Get him off the lot. They're halfway through shooting, LB. Are you questioning my authority? No, sir, of course not. You think I'm happy seeing my baby being ruined? Where's your consideration? You're right. I I'm sorry. I I'll fire him immediately. Rushes stink. Fire the director. Uh-huh. Beat it. What about her? She's old hat. She's been here three days. Mm. In. Sit. Well, I suppose you want something, Hedda. Everybody does. Can it, Louie? We've known each other too long. As though I could forget. You were so wonderful in my first film. So gorgeous, so talented. So young and so dumb. And now, so many years later, so very, very broke. So? You had a nice little career. Don't past tense me. Hedda Hopper still has a big slice of life to live. How about another contract? The business has changed. We no longer carry bit players. It's the bit player bit that hurts, Louis. How about a part? Any part? Even a bit part? Love to, darling. But there just isn't much call for your type right now. What is my type, Louis? Or is every woman sliding into middle age just another old bag? How can you say such a thing? My mother should hear you say such a thing. Oh, she was a, a saint. On her deathbed, she was beautiful. I'm not on my deathbed, Louis. You're a handsome, highly desirable woman. Oh, now we're talking about another kind of bed, maybe a casting couch. Obviously, the business hasn't changed that much. Okay, okay. You got your part. And just your type. A witch. Spelled with a B. Hello, <laughs> well, darling. It's such a pleasure. Don't make screaming. You remember the little girl who was mine? Oh, she works for me. Of course. Oh, what a cutie. Uh, Andy Howard, isn't she a cutie? What's happening? Now, tell the well now. Oh, this the usual. Now, don't be vague with me. Gable's on the back lot. Show me.
Yes. Isn't this dressing room C? So? <laughs> Sorry, this has always been mine. <laughs> Not anymore. Hal? Hello, Mike. Show this bit player where to go. You're down the hall, Miss Harper. Since when? Since Mr. Mayor said so. I'm sorry. It's to the left, Miss Harper. Good, I can use the company. How do you do? I'm Heather Harper. How do you do, Miss Harper? How do you do? I guess I'm here. Uh, I think Shelley has to make up her face. Bye, sweetheart. Isn't he gorgeous, Louie? You have a big star on your head. Cut! Who the hell? Well, uh, well, well. Oh, Clark, take a break, will you, Hal? Give me the uh, stand in. Sweetheart, give us a kiss. Hello, Luella. Oh, you big flirt. Trouble on the home front, I hear. Aluella, that's not true. Oh, a little bird told me all about it. We're right in the middle of the scene here. Not such a loss. Loss is what I mean. I'm just trying to stay on schedule, LB. Gable's on the back lot, you big mouth. Luella thinks we're holding out. She freezes us. I had to say something. So, tell us you missed the screening. Miss Parsons, the screening begins in five minutes. I'll be there. Hedda! Oh, your leading lady. Oh, you lucky thing. How does it feel starring opposite Gable? Well, Clark and I... Uh, actually, we... It's more a... A cameo role. God wants you. Uh, let's have lunch sometime. It's been ages. I'll call you. That film was a stinger. I thought it was okay. Me too, babe. I'm the critic in the family. Mother! What's wrong? That means your mama's a big success. Everyone will laugh at me. Well, let them. Just a bunch of little Miss Nothing Burgers whose mother's net saw. What's so bad about that? <laughs> Collins, pull over. There's my lead story. They're only kissing. They're stars. And they're married. But not to each other. And that's news. Over there. Mama, how could you? She writes like Sam Goldwyn talks. Uh, what about our review? Uh, yeah, yeah. I 
来人。I'd like to report that MGM's latest release is a big hit. I'd like to, but I can't. It's a big miss, which is exactly what you should give it. Get me Hearst. A deal was a deal. Good afternoon, Luella. Luella, think of me as a father. I want to rule by love, not by fear. Hmm. How does that sound? That sounds wonderful. Send Miss Parsons in. Luella, I am so sorry I caused you trouble with Mr. Hurst. I'm sure you didn't know what you were doing. Let let me explain something about reviewing. We're all in the picture business together. Marion Davies is Mr. Hurst's friend. I make Marion Davies movies for Mr. Hurst. Mr. Hurst makes publicity for me. And you write the publicity for Mr. Hurst and myself. Everybody works. Everybody's happy. There are no bad pictures. At least, not at this studio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's why the lion is king of the jungle, because he knows best. I appreciate such royal advice and the privilege of listening to the lion roar. <sighs> Luella, think of me as a father. I want to rule by love, not by fear. But you want to rule. I'm glad we understand each other. Perfect. I understand cats. <laughs> spoiled my surprise. Sorry. <laughs> Good things come in small packages. Yeah. Mother, we could save some money if I lived with you. If I'm busting my booty sending you through school, that's my business. I'm not complaining, nor should you. Well, I just thought... Bill, a good education always spells class. We've got to keep up appearances. We could use the money. Don't you worry. Money's my problem. Hello? Jim, dearest, I thought you were in Mexico. Good grief. No, 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 don't do anything. Just lock the door. Trust Heather. Bye. What's up? Have I got a pearl for you. Jim just called from Mexico. It seems he got into the tequila and relieved himself off the hotel balcony right onto the Mexican army. <laughs> yes. Well, if you could get one of Mr. Hurst's photographers to bail him out. Just mention me if you can. Merry Christmas. Why do you still do that? What? Play up to her. Well, I, I have to if I want to be mentioned in her column. I thought she was your friend. So did I. 
I guess her success got in the way. But you're a good actress. Talent? That's only 10%. You need connections. Mom, if you're an actress, I don't see we're why... We're survivors. We may scrape by, but we have our dignity, okay? Nothing's fair. We do all right, don't we? Of course we do, Mom. Besides, I just got myself a job which was going to pay your school fees on time, and that's a promise. Well, what's the role? Oh, it's um, <laughs> society, Dame. Oh. Washburn, Hedda, oh. I will die if I stay here one more moment. Well, try and relax or you'll crack. Oh, you have a lovely voice, Hedda. Oh. <laughs> Hedda, did you hear Luella's latest about that actor in Mexico? Yes. He did pee-pee off the balcony. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Yes, I, I heard. Oh, I love Luella. I would miss her. Where does she get that stuff? Hmm? Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> How about some turtle dove? Hedda, the last time I wore that, a waiter thought I was my daughter's mother. <laughs> <laughs> Hedda, I'm going to crack. Oh, 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 I quit. I wish I was that popular. Maybe you will be. I'm not perfect enough. Who's perfect? Mom, she always does the right thing. Well, you'll get there. You think so? Hey, who's perfect? I'm not so perfect myself. <clears throat> I drink too much. But I like what I drink. Harriet, I know I'm not your idea of a father. I never said that you were. And to some people, I'm a bit of a joke. I'm just a two-bit urologist, not a heart specialist. But I do understand something about the human ticker. Your mama casts a big shadow. One day, you're going to have to walk away. But you'll do it just fine. Good night, precious. See you after the show. Good night, Mama. Good night, sweetie. What a Christmas haul. There are more presents than from our wedding day. Colin spent all week collecting them from all the studios, and they just kept loading up the car. And I, I kept sending him back for more. Why do they do it, Doggy? Because they all love my lollipop. with a new name, Carrie Grant. When Carrie and Gary Cooper are at a party, my tongue gets tied trying to differentiate. Archie, leave well enough alone. And now a hand for Mary I'm listening to Yes. She of the laughing eyes. Marion, you've never looked lovelier. You have never looked lovelier. Her voice will ruin my set. <laughs> Don't be mean. Why do people listen to her? Find out what's really going on. You know more than she does. It's too bad you're not getting paid for it. Well, good night, Mom. Good night, Bill. Mom. 
It'll be all right. the downcast eyes. Hedda, you've never looked more desperate. <sighs> Excuse me, ma'am. I've come to see Miss Dima Harshbarger. Your name, please? Hedda Hopper, actress. Aren't they all? I beg your pardon? None of them have appointments, neither do you. No, but they lack what I have, time and patience. In other words, I'll wait. You're still here. I can't. I tried. What do you want? To see you. Because you're the most influential person in network radio, and I want to be on the airwaves. So does every eager beaver with tonsils. What else have you got to offer? I have a better voice than Luella Parsons. So does my dog. He's not on the radio. I have the lowdown on the high ups of Hollywood. Yeah? Yeah. Hm. I'll give you five minutes. Let's see how low down you can get. for station identification. Made it. If she's as good as you say she is, she's got the job. The Hollywood Easter Parade rarely began Saturday night with a dinner given by Mr. and Mrs. Basil Rathbone to celebrate their wedding anniversary. All the guests came as brides and grooms. A wedding anniversary? And prizes were won by Freddie March and his wife as Mr. and Mrs. Caveman, wearing a bit oh, of... Oh, terrific. It was a typical... I don't get it. Didn't you check the script? That That's your job. I asked you to do it. You knew I was going to be out of town. We met again at the home of Adrian, the designer. There again were all the stars, this time in their Easter Street costume. I bought dirt. She's and gone Russell and prissy. Proved how popular the new large hats are, and I must say, in their gay prints, they looked like spring Here's bouquets. Here's the commercial. When it comes to protecting their hair, every major star follows the same procedure. They all use marrow oil shampoo. Marrow she oil sounds worse than a hog collar at a tea party. So much longer. And now, thank you and goodbye. Goodbye is right. This is a business for youth. There's no room for has-beens. Next time you decide to commit suicide, don't do it in public. I thought I was most dignified. You didn't give me dignity. You sold me dirt. But I couldn't say on the air what I told you. Why not? It's unladylike. If Luella Parsons can do it and still walk around in skirts, why can't you? That's it. My one chance and I ruined it. Next time, if there is a next time, just remember who you're up against. Can 
of soup for a night's work? That's insulting. And that's the second time in two months. Most people consider it a privilege. But Carol, dear, if you'd prefer to be excluded from the show and my column, it's up to you. Luella, I, I, I think what Carol is saying presence. is... Um, It isn't fair. Tomato or chicken? Tomato. It's the color of my blood. <laughs> now let's welcome funny, lovely Carol Lombard. Thank you, Marilla. It's an honor to be here. It's a sad day when true great men are forced to part company. What do we tell the press? The truth. Help me. Uh, what? And say the Hearst Mayor deal fell through because we couldn't find enough parts for his mistress? Uh, How about artistic differences? Uh, Good. I'll send it straight out to Luella. No. I want it given to every reporter in this town, simultaneously. L.B. Parsons always gets a 48-hour exclusive. Luella Parsons belongs to Hearst. And he's gone. I'd have Call Cohen, Warner, and Goldwyn. Now we can get rid of that dame once and for all. <laughs> You mean no more Christmas presents? I mean no more 48 hour exclusives, no more inside information, no more nothing! What are we doing here? Sam Goldwyn is a name for a polo player. Jack Warner should be wearing jodhpurs. <laughs> Harry Cohn should be hitting a little ball with a long hammer. This is good for you. This is classy. I hate horses. <laughs> horses hate me. So? Horses should be different? Everybody hates you. Yeah. Boys, listen. I'm uncomfortable. Luella is going to hate us. So what? Who is she? A killer. She's a scribbler. Look at us. We're the most powerful men in Hollywood. Maybe even in the country. Yeah, the world. We run the studios that create the movies that make the people think the way they think. And here we are, scared of some dame. You brought her into this town. Yeah. I'll send her home. If we stick together and freeze her out, she'll be just another hack reporter scrambling around for yesterday's stuff. What do you say? Sam. Deal me in. Jack. I'm with you. Harry. Uh... Damn fools. Oh, Lolly, take it easy. Don't you take it easy, me. Honey, I just don't want to see them push you around. Who the hell said I would? Mm, don't take this out on me. I'm supposed to be your friend, remember? Then support me, damn it. I can't tell you how to do your job. They're playing dirty. Come on, hon. Who's number one? Oh, Docky. You gotta stop crying. Your eyes are all red. They are not. No, they're not. They're beautiful. And you're smart. Smarter than they are. And no one is gonna take anything away from you, right? You're Luella Parsons. Right. Oh, you're so right, Docky. I'm gonna eat them alive. Show Miss Parsons in. Luella, darling. Louie, I know just what you're going to say, and you were right. All those 48-hour exclusives just weren't fair to anyone, were they? Louie, 
Now I'm going to be an honest, outspoken, impartial reporter. You know why we get along so well. We understand each other. Lion and cat. Meow. This is turned into a nightmare. She's destroying the entire industry. We were in secret negotiations with Constance Bennett. Secret. Parsons printed our offer. I lost Connie. I lost my star. You fellas think that I haven't suffered. Blabbermouth Parsons told people that I was trying to chisel Garbo on her contract while her mother was dying. Oh, we had to settle. It cost me this. Enough already. Parsons is more dangerous now than ever before. Give her whatever she wants. 48 hour exclusives, anything. But get her off her back, or Louis, include me out. Ida! Yes, yes, Elby. What am I gonna do? Find another cat. So what am I gonna do with two alley cats? What do alley cats do? They fight. <laughs> They'll tear each other apart. There'll be fur all over the place. Oh, but Ida, where do I get another cat? <laughs> Have I got a job for you? No, no, I didn't say a part. I said a job. What are you talking about? <laughs> Louie, I'm an actress, not a journalist. I can't even type or spell. All you have to do is dictate it to a secretary. She's breathing heavily. What is it you really want? Gossip? That's right. Just like Luella. All you have to do is dictate it to a secretary. Oh, shut up. They want to pay me to gossip? Woo the prize of surprises. Joan Crawford is a mother. Joan called with the thrilling news that she has adopted a bonny baby called Christina Crawford. What a lucky girl to have such a mom. Mom? Sorry, but what about this Hedda Hopper luncheon? Every female writer in Hollywood will be there. Poor Hedda. Going from one hobby to another. What's it going about? I don't know. Fashion, chit-chat. I don't know why, but I feel I owe her something. Press two fourteen double two dots. Let's give her a pat on the head. Okay. New paragraph. We'll all learn from clothes horse Hedda Hopper's new column. Period. Bravo, Hedda. Exclamation mark. We welcome Hollywood's newest member of the Fourth Estate, Hedda Hopper. Congrats. How long do you figure she'll last? Three months? Three, three weeks. <laughs> She's about as willing to deal with dirt as my housemaid. Hedda against Luella is like pitting a gnat against an elephant. <laughs> Hedda, darling. Oh, your column, your column is, is it's fabulous. fabulous. You hens go peck someplace else. Scram. I want to talk to you, alone. What's wrong? What's right? Everyone's so complimentary. Everyone is tickled pink watching you dig your own grave. I've read tougher prose on greeting cards. They all came to wish me well. Except Luella. She probably read that no cat sign. I thought she was my friend. Nobody is your friend. <laughs> Only me. I got you your radio break, you ruined it. Now fate has given you one last chance. 
wiser. Take off your kid gloves. Show them your claws. They'll hate me. So what? That's a small price to pay for success. Come on. You can do it. You really think I can? You're an actress, aren't you? Madam, this is an entirely respectable establishment. Sheltering unmarried couples? I can assure you I have not received such information. <clears throat> Madam, you just can't barge in. It's indecent. I do hope so. I can explain. I'm sure you can. Shall we have a little talk? Miss Hopper, this is libelous. I don't understand why you're doing this, Mother. Because I'm exactly that, your mother. But it's just a date. Miss Hopper, you, you have a dangling participle. Leave it. Won't be the only thing dangling after they read that piece. I want to meet your Matahari, Bill. Oh, Mom. She's not ready to meet you. <laughs> you know, maybe I do have what it takes. <laughs> They're ready for you on stage 12. All right, thanks. What did I tell you? The syndication office are pouring Hannah. in. Every paper wants you. Your dirt is Hannah. pay dirt. Darling, may I take you to lunch? Sorry, busy. Uh, sometime soon, then. Sometime soon. I don't understand it. Not so long ago, she wouldn't even let me in her dressing room. Now she's all over me like a wet puppy dog. What you're beginning to experience, my dear, is the power of the press, best summed up in my favorite four-letter word, beginning with F. Fear. <laughs> this is Luella Parsons from Hollywood saying that's all for tonight. Mom, did you catch the show? No, I, I just got oh, here. It was terrific. Come on, we don't want to be late. Oh, I, I want to. Swamped with calls. Good. I'm glad people like us. I mean about the divorce. Sweetie, nobody's getting divorced today. Yes. If anybody who were anyone in this town were getting a divorce, I'd know all about it. I'd be the first to know. After all, I am known as love's undertaker, aren't I? <laughs> I spoke to him. Who did you speak to? The president's son, Jimmy Roosevelt. Jimmy's getting a divorce? Yes. Collins, get right over to the Roosevelt house. Why? Don't be so silly to get all the details. You can read all the details. Hedda Hopper broke the story hours ago. That smarmy, silly showgirl. We thought you knew. She scooped me. Maybe she just got lucky. Maybe you didn't do your job. What is the point of my training you when you let a monumental scandal fall into the hands of a, a two-bit flapper? I followed up. 
Just because you're my daughter, don't you think for a minute you're going to get a free ride in life. <sighs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shout. It wasn't my fault. Of course it wasn't. I just want to be a good reporter. You are a good reporter. Got so mad I couldn't think straight. I'm so sorry that she scooped you, Mama. And after all I've done for her, how could Hedda betray me? Everybody's against me. Oh, Mama, don't cry. Who the hell does she think she is? Trying to do in two years what it's taken me 20 to do. She's an amateur, just like me. Oh, you're a pro in comparison to Hedda Hopper. But nobody comes close to you. That's right. And I'm going to be damned if I'll let that pipsqueak ruin my good name. That's my mama. I'm going to beat her at her own game. Well, that is a hat. I want you to tell your mother the truth. About what? Mama, the hat. I know. It's fabulous. Collins, you haven't said. Uh, about what, eh? Well, what you think? Huh? About the hat. Oh, <laughs> the hat. It's terrific. <laughs> Like it? Yeah. Luella, I didn't see you. You you look great. I know, I know. Such a sweet chapeau. Uh, like it? I'm wearing the smaller, more vertical lines myself. This week, anyway. kids. We've heard you've heard. We insisted, didn't we, Joel? That's right, Tommy. I said I told Anne make sure Hopper gets the story first. First? I thought it was an exclusive. Well, of course, exclusive. Right, Joel? Right. It better be. Had a what a friend's for. You think you're doing me a favor? Oh, I never said that. Tommy, did you say that? I never said that. When you give me an exclusive, you're giving your client the hottest column in town. That's what I said. That's what I said. I don't do trade-offs. No, Miss Hopper. And I don't like greedy guys. Tommy, I warned you about that. Maybe we should have stuck with Luella. I remember when Hedda would have crawled on her belly for that story, or any other story for that matter. Worm? Viper. Kid stuff, huh? How's Joseph Cottontail? Still hopping down the bunny trails of Deanna Durbin? 
It's not funny and it's not true. <laughs> oh, don't confuse me with facts. If my readers want accuracy, they'll study the encyclopedia. Your moronic stories are bothering Mrs. Cotton. I'll lay off. I might. You'd be a bit more forthcoming about your forthcoming film. What are you and Orson Welles up to? Ask Orson. Now, if you won't cooperate, why should I? <laughs> I'm warning you. Stay out of my private life. I don't take well to threats, Cottontail. You dumb bunny. Just keep it between ourselves and my 40 million fans. Perhaps I should tell Hedda. I don't want to offend her. I wouldn't touch a story that's been double planted. And I won't be double crossed. Come on, Orson, spill the beans. This Citizen Kane caper. It's about William Randolph Hearst, isn't it? Is it? Don't be cute. How did she find out? Her husband's medical advisor to the studio. Now I've told both Hedda and Luella, what'll I do? Pray. I wouldn't dare make a movie about Mr. Hearst without his permission. Would I? Well, would you? Ask his representative. Luella, you never looked lovelier. As a responsible journalist, please set Miss Hopper straight about Citizen Kane. She has the story all wrong. Orson took me to a fabulous lunch. He explained all about the film to me. You're meowing of the wrong tree. Guess I'll stick to my lead story about the kid. Who's? Baby faces baby. She told you? If you ladies uh, will excuse me. This is my pregnancy. You're just sweeping up leftover crumbs from my column. Yes, it's Crummy column, all right. No. Over here. You guys better protect me. This was your idea. You're a public relations expert. You're a agent. Sweetheart. You're on your own. We're about to see how the press releases. Okay. Whose baby is this baby, anyway? Honey, she's just trying to butt in on my story. <laughs> I called that item in an hour ago. And dear, now be honest, it's ours. That kid's a head of Hopper exclusive. Well, I did talk to you both. Both? Oh. Well, that's oh, it. Little. Tommy! Joel! You want your client list to be known as the Hollywood death list? Doll, I think you need a new agent. I don't work with clients I can't trust. Isn't anyone going to defend her? Not in this brave town. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, on behalf of my former client, I apologize. I warned you she was a screwball, Joel. With all due respect, I think it was I who warned you. With all due respect, all due respect. And I thought I had a friend. Oh, come on, Luella. We are friends. I'm just doing my job. You're trying to do a job on me. Guess I don't have to try very hard. Relax. There's plenty of room for both of us. I'm not going to give you one inch of space. You really think I'm going to back away after all those years scratching at the door? You want war? Elsa! I'm leaving. This gatecrasher is bothering me. Who? 
this freeloader. For all of you who are eavesdropping, get this straight. Hedda Hopeless and Luella Parsons don't live in the same universe. Where's Doggy? Relaxing in case he has to operate. Jockey. Jockey. Oh, there, not Jockey. Not an ounce of sincerity there, in the entire jockey. room. <laughs> Don't forget your hat. There are birds in the trees outside. <laughs> well, Cottontail, still want to fight? Or shall I write a nice piece how you and Deanna are just good friends? Ah, deviled eggs, my favorite. Joseph, don't. Dum dum da dum 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 dum. Ready for your farewell performance? I've always dreamed of playing the role to end all roles. <laughs> okay. Roll it. I guess I'll sell real estate. I wouldn't advise that. It's a lousy profession. Who let you in? Now, Orson, what is one woman's opinion in the face of your genius? This is a private screening. Good. I don't like to sit with riffraff. Anyone brave enough to kick this old rattlesnake in the tail is worth having for a friend. <laughs> Let's get on with the show. Mr. Hurst, Hedda Hopper, I've just seen Citizen Kane. Uh, well, I suppose the well has already told you. I can't believe she didn't warn you. Oh, you mean she hasn't seen it? Well, I'm so sorry. For you and Marion, of course. There I was, swearing to the chief that the film had nothing to do with him. That sneak hopper going behind my back. For a moment, I thought Mr. Hurst was going to fire me. Me! Well, what do you do? Smear that film and everyone connected with it. But L.B., Citizen Kane doesn't hurt you. I will not have a great man held up to ridicule. At times like these, we leaders of the community must put aside our petty problems and stand firm against attack. Today, Hearst, tomorrow... Citizen Kane is a good film and deserves to be seen. You're not God. You're being ridiculous. Ah. Luella is a good employee, <laughs> defending her chief, canceling the premiere. And here you are giving Wells millions of dollars in free publicity. You should learn something from Luella about loyalty. That's why she still has her job. Luella has her job because she knows all about the skeleton in William Randolph Hearst's closet. Ah, I, I'm unaware of any such things. The point is, she's doing her job for her boss. Now, you do your job for your boss. Correction, Luella's trying to save her hide and you're not my boss. I made you. Try unmaking what you've created to find that's the hard part. Sure, you got me the job, Louis, just like you always did when it suited you. But what you gave and what I made of it are two different things. I'm not your puppet. You know who I belong to? The great unwashed public. I have what they want, first-hand, first-rate gossip. Take me away, they'll holler like a motherless babe. Ah, Louis. What's the matter? Don't want to chase me around the office anymore. No, I remember you like them timid and needy. Funny how power makes even a short man seem tall. I never realized you were so small. Take a good look, Louie. That's prime grade rump roast. And nobody owns it but me. I didn't get rid of one monster. I've created two. You 
think this is wise. Ah, I think this is necessary. We'll find her dirty linen and hang it up for all to see. Here he comes. So, what do you got? Nothing. You spend six months of our time and money, you come up with nothing? She's a woman, ain't she? Even got married, had a kid. They get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 25 years, not once. About 10 years ago. On a ah. trip to Europe, Miss Hopper fell in love yeah. ah. with a married man. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and now you're talking. Now his wife was a cripple. He felt he couldn't get a divorce. Let's get the guy. He'll talk. He's dead. He killed himself because Hedda wouldn't sleep with him till they were married. So, what do we do now? So, how long can they last, eh? The public will get sick of their gossip and their, and their pain and the butt. That civilian love scene. Orson Welles has stolen Rita Hayworth from Coast Guardsman Victor Mature. Is that the sort of sneaky thing our boys in uniform deserve? This is Luella Parsons from Hollywood. Hedda, please. I have a child to support. No one will hire me. All those things you've been saying. Who fired the first shot? And who gave Luella the beat on her baby? It, it was an error of judgment. Hedda, please. Couldn't we be friends? <sighs> the trouble with you, my dear, is you're just not humble enough. <clears throat> Bill, darling. Haven't seen you all day. Come in. You'll excuse us. Bill, her fate's just like that of any other struggling young actress. You were there once. Exactly, and when I was, she snubbed me. I survived, so why can't she? Now, what have you been up to? I was listening to Luella and thinking, at least my mom's not that bad. I guess I was wrong. End of an era. I'm not going far. Doggy, she's leaving. That was the plan, wasn't it? Keep the roost warm in case the world proves too cold, okay? Honey, let me call the studio. Mama, I've got to do it on my own. But I can help you get started. Your starting me would finish me. In the eyes of the film industry, I'd always be Luella Parsons' little girl. Well, that's not so bad, is it? Of course not. But I have to climb the ropes like everybody else. Understand? Mama, it doesn't help to have you watching to see if I'm going to fall. I'm scared enough as it is. She has to make it on her own. A little help never hurts. 
Being alone is the worst thing in the world. Oh, God, I hope they don't decide to ship you out. They need doctors. You're too old. I volunteered, remember? Hey, you'll be fine. I want to make a bet. Darkie, when? We sail in a week. What are you doing? She's still my little girl. They don't call this town Lollywood for nothing. Keep coming, Miss Hopper. I'm <laughs> coming. <laughs> Just drop them here. What is this, some kind of competition? All I did was ask for ideas. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you soon, Miss Hopper. <laughs> Calisthenics. More hats? More hats. I could use some help opening these. Don't you feel funny all these people spending their money and time and coupons on you? They do it out of affection. I'm helping to build morale. What are you doing calisthenics for? They want me in good shape. Bill, you didn't. I did. I have spent time and money keeping you in the Coast Guard. I pulled strings. Mother, I'm not Pinocchio. I don't see why if people are fighting overseas, I should be home twiddling my thumbs. I forbid it. I've already volunteered for the Frogmen and they accepted me. Underwater demolition, that's suicide. Well, it's my way of helping to build morale. But what about me? What about our friendship? Friendship isn't the word I'd use for something so one-sided. I did what you wanted. And what you want isn't what I value anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. This place. It's a wonderful home. This is the house that fear built. I heard you call it that. Darn right. You want to go back to living in that dark hovel? At least it was honest. What's honest about poverty? Today, I'm earning a quarter of a million dollars a year. Then I was a starving nobody. You were my mother. Maybe you embarrassed me, but I was never ashamed. Ashamed by success? Ashamed by what you've done with it. I remember when they used to walk all over you. Well, now you walk all over them. You've become just like the people you used to hate. You and your friend Luella. She's no friend of mine. You're both the same. You go around terrorizing everybody. Well, at least you can't say anything that's going to hurt me. Bill, you darn fool, you'll get killed. Well, gee, thanks, Mom. That's going to fill me with confidence when I'm 200 feet underwater and I got 50 pounds of TNT strapped around my waist. Bill, darling, you mean everything to me. I'm sorry, Mother. Bill. Hi, Miss Hopper. Remember me? I used to haul ice to that dump of yours. Here. Oh, no more hats. I don't think this is a hat. There's a message with it. You want me to read it to you? Won't you be my valentine? Nobody else will. I stink, but then so do you. 
Goodbye, Ann. Must be some sort of joke, huh? Sure, some joke. You sure have come a long way. What is the matter with you? Do you listen to your manager? Your column is in 85 big city papers, 3,000 small town dailies, 2,000 weeklies, plus your radio show. Your loving fans sent you 85,000 hats, and you're worried about one lousy poison pen package. That silly girl Anne tried to kill herself. I feel a certain responsibility. Don't. She probably did it for the publicity. It is not your fault. Hedda, we're rich. Enjoy yourself. I'm enjoying my 10%. You're loaded. Powerful. People will do anything you say they're so afraid of you. What more could you want? <sighs> Come on. Let's have some fun. Young Harriet Parsons has produced a movie, I Remember Mama. What do you say we go give it a review? Let's do that. Miss P, look. And why she bothered to come? It's a foregone conclusion that she's going to say. But she don't have any bone to pick with Harriet. Harriet is my daughter. That's bone enough. Well, you could always run that item about Bill. They say he can really hit it. <laughs> Are some things we don't do. Mama, have you read Hedda's column? You know I don't read that trash. Now, you mustn't fuss about what she says. Your little film was very good. And I'm going to give it a nice plug in my own column. Mama, read it. She gave me her whole column. Mama, it's a rave. I'm a hit. Mama, I want you to take her to lunch. Oh, Mama, this is between you and her. She's done the biggest thing in the world for me. Now, you've got to take the next step. Please. Lunch? At Romanoff's? You promise? Mama? Harriet? You're the only person I'd do this for. I only hope it's not a big mistake. Would you, madame, care to order? Since I'm with Hedda, I'll have cracked crab. I'll have the barracuda. Oh, and my dear, take this. I won't need a knife. I can tear a crab apart with my bare hands. I thought you came here to bury the hatchet. Depends where. I think it's time we went to the little girl's room and straightened something out. Okay, let's go. Uh, uh, maybe this is not such a bad thing after all. If those two cats become friends, well, they'd have to be nice to each other. And if they're nice to each other, well, the public wouldn't read them. And if the public doesn't read them, that means we're off the hook. This room is temporarily out of order. Sketch. Go take care of the boys. I've had a gutful of you, you smarmy little sneak. To think I used to be your friend. You were just holding on to my coattails. Oh, you were very willing to have me for a friend. Years ago, when I fed you all the Hollywood gossip for free. And you were very happy to be mine when I gave you rave reviews for bit parts. Ah, that was chicken feed. How appropriate. It's a business arrangement. 
are very good at arrangements, as Mr. Hurst well knows. I know you. All innuendo and no facts. The fact is, you've kept your job because you were on William Randolph Hearst's yacht the day Thomas Ince got shot. That's a lie. It was food poisoning. <laughs> Lead poisoning is more like it. I was in New York. Prove it. I don't have to prove anything. It's a malicious rumor. Well, it's the kind of story, if it isn't true, it should be. You can't even get your facts straight. The other day, you, you even said John Wayne was a pinko. I said he was too soft on commies. John Wayne is not exactly a knee-jerk liberal. So I was wrong about Wayne. I apologize. At least I tried to get the facts straight. Oh, I suppose you think you're the only one with an ethical code. No, just the only one who follows it. Like getting Docky those plum jobs, that pathetic husband of yours who spends more time under the operating table than over it? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Stop it. You leave Docky out of this. He's a wonderful surgeon. Oh, a wonderful snoop is more like it, giving you all the inside dirt on who's pregnant, who has VD, who's having an abortion. He's a real man. Something that would terrify you. I have many gentlemen friends. Oh, honey, don't get cute. You have escorts. It's been a quarter of a century since you got into bed with anything more exciting than a hot water bottle. Well, the self-appointed guardian of Hollywood morality, you certainly have a foul mind. From you, I take that as a compliment. What's the matter, Miss Iceberg? Am I hitting a little too close to home? <gasps> You're jealous. Of what? Because I'm a woman. A woman who's never learned how to sleep alone. At least I don't delude myself that I'm princess of the prom. Little lollipop, the old-time sucker. You're all laughing at you behind your back. You and Docky Walkie necking like teenagers in public. Luella, who thinks she's the most beautiful woman in the world. You know who you really are? Your little Miss Hiccup from Hicksville, who happened to land her butt in the butter. You know, sometimes I think, isn't it possible that she's just a nice, sweet lady who landed in a dirty business? And then I think, yeah, Except she happened to invent the business. I didn't make it for you to break it. The truth is, you can't stand the competition. Sweetie, as far as you're concerned, there is no competition. You can't even scoop ice cream. Dearie, you can't even write a shopping list. No wonder I have more newspapers than you. You do not. I do, too. I have more radio stations. Not anymore. I just got the 400th radio station in the United States of America. Oh, yes, I do. I... Please. I won't tell a soul. I didn't hear a thing. Lipstick smudged. Your hair looks like a bird's nest. <laughs> we look a mess. We are a mess. We reach 75 million people every day, and we're a mess. That's power. That's crazy. For a butcher's daughter, you sure don't mince words. You have a way with words. I know. I like fighting. You hate it when somebody fights back. Be honest. To be honest, I only sincerely, deeply like one person. And that's myself. 
You're lucky. I never had that privilege. Well, how do I look? Undamaged and unbowed. Good. I don't want to give L.B. any pleasure. Oh, we have sure reduced his roar to a squeak. You know what I was thinking? What? If there weren't a Luella Parsons, Hedda Hopper wouldn't exist. And if there weren't a Hedda Hopper, Luella Parsons might cease to exist. Uh-huh. We are best enemies. <laughs> They're coming out, yeah, yeah. They're arm in arm. Arm in arm? I do. Plug in Cohen, Warner, and Goldman. I want them to hear this. Everything all right? Yes, thank you, my dear. But you can take this. It's cold and cracked like Hedda. some pepper up your nose. Yeah. Oh. Now, Hedda, now, you must relax. You mustn't get upset. Your facelift is unraveling. The only thing that'll lift your face is an elevator. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is that so? That's so. Oh, you... What? Too soon. For the first and last time, you can quote me. Drop dead. Thank you.